So that's what I do for a living. So what was that? I, I can see you. I can hear you. It was juggling. Juggling, yes. Can we all agree that was juggling? Yes. So you all know that was juggling. Name a juggler. Do you have a favorite juggler? Stop it. <laughs> Well, friends, that's a crazy thing, right? That you all know what juggling is, but none of you can really name a single juggler. You don't have a favorite juggler. If I were to ask this question at the turn of the century, the entire room would have just resonated with the name Paul Cinquevalle. It's this guy. My, he's good looking. No, there he is. Paul Cinquevalle, he was this, uh, this Polish-born, or Prussian-born guy who was really famous. He was a household name. His name was synonymous with talent and skill achieved through practice. His name, he died in 1918, right? His name was still used in newspapers as late as the 1970s as a reference to somebody that was outstanding in their field. Okay, yeah, nobody cares. That's great. Um, Share some ideas, Tom. Have a nice time with your friends at TED, Tom. And so Cinque Valley, he was, he was really well known for doing things with household objects, things that you would find in your kitchen, around your house. And he had this one trick that he was very well known for, where he had a ceramic plate, a dish, that he would hold in his hand vertically like this. And then he would have an assistant throw a cannonball at him. And he would catch it balanced on the vertical edge of the plate. And as the story goes, his hands were just totally mangled, covered with scars, because of the number of times that he screwed up. <laughs> um, but the thing is, in juggling, as in with a, a lot of other performing arts, is ideas are shared, they're riffed upon, things change, and so there was this man named Rosani, this next slide here, as, long as, as well as a man named Verley, who decided to reinterpret that trick using a glass bottle and uh, a cannonball. In the absence of a cannonball, I brought with me this up. Uh, 81-pound bowling ball. (laughs) 18-pound bowling ball. (laughs) And uh, I guess I'm going to try it, because that's what I told him I was going to do. Great. Um, This is the way it works. We put the bowling ball on the foot. Pick up the bottle. And then we're going to kick it. Catch it on the edge of the bottle. Um, I would like to mention that I am a juggler. This is not a magic trick. So if you see something coming towards you, it is. Bottle on the foot. Bottle on the foot. Bottle in the hand. Monitor precariously right there. Good enough. So that's a trick that hasn't been performed in over 100 years. Maybe you can see why. Great. Well, here's one of the other crazy things. So this style of juggling, juggling with these household objects, with these kind of esoteric things, this actually used to be a very common form of entertainment. In fact, you could buy specially made bottles, specially made cannonballs from from these catalogs, Um, This is in the back of a book from 1917 called Juggling or How to Be a Juggler by a man named Rupert Ingelais. You can see you got your bottle and your plate, you got your your stick and balls. That looks awfully familiar. (laughs) Great, okay. (laughs) But even though this was popular entertainment, it seems to have been forgotten, misplaced, misused. Nobody does it anymore which is nice for me because I have no competition in my little market. Um, Let's see, there we are. But this is not just a Western problem. That's the other crazy thing. Here 
in the United States of America, when we think juggling, we just th we think about you know like uh, balls, clubs, rings, the whatever that stuff was. <laughs> but juggling in, in the West is widely considered to be this form of entertainment only. And in fact, around the world, it, juggling games, these games of dexterity and skill, they have religious roles, they have different cultural roles, they, some people use them as a form of gambling, which is great. And uh, uh, I used to tour with a company called Cirque du Soleil, perhaps you've heard of it. Um, I was with them for five years and now here we are. You and me together. Um, I'm just stating facts. Whatever, whatever interpretation you had there, that's all on you, lady. Come on. But during my time with Soleil, I, uh, I actually spent about 18 months, a year and a half in Japan, and I had the good fortune of studying a little bit of this Japanese juggling art form known as Ido Daikagura, which is Japanese for uh, Daikagura from Ido. <laughs> And it was originally used as a way to, uh, to clear temples of evil spirits by Shinto priests before ceremonies. It's since turned into more of a secular thing, even though there aren't very many people that perform it. Um, which I mention really only so that, you know, if you don't see any evil spirits here at the pageant tonight, you're welcome. Here we go. Can we go to the next slide, please? Little Ido Daikagura right there. Yeah, look at them. They're having a great time, just like us. Um, so this uses string, a ceramic dish, and this dangle pole. Here we go. Two tricks with the bowl, the string, and the bowl. It gets better. I'm just kidding. This is awesome. How could this get any better? Yes. Ido Daikagura for you. You know, I could actually talk about, about the history of juggling around the world quite a bit, um, but that is not why we are here right now. But if you go to the next slide, um, I actually wrote a book about the history of juggling all the way around the world. This is not a joke. Come on. I went to graduate school for this, man. Come on. Copies over there. Do a trick. Okay, I understand. <laughs> Let's go. Um, this is a very old trick uh, that actually dates back to the 1400s. It uses a straw, a plate, a knife, and a playing card. Very old trick. If you've seen it before, uh, you're going to see it again. It's a lot harder than it looks. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. Yeah, that's one of the one of the first representations we have of this. This is actually from a book from the uh, from the really early 1800s, but we know that it dates back to basically when playing cards turned into a thing. So that's exciting. So, okay, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, "Hey, Tom." What's the point? So here's the thing, guys. We've talked about everybody here knows what juggling is, right? Everybody here, maybe you've never seen any of this. Have you seen some of this material before? Have you seen these tricks before? Is this new? Yeah. So in the arts, in the humanities, in the sciences, we always talk about standing on the shoulders of giants, right? They're these trailblazers that did all the work for us. So we know that things are possible in juggling and in a lot of the circus. 
we don't know who those people were, nor do we really know what it was that they did. And personally, as a working artist, I think that that is a real tragedy. So what I like to do, or what I'm doing in my work, is researching all of these old tricks, kind of trying to reverse engineer and figure out how it was that they worked. Because there's no book that can teach you how to do many of these things. You just have to believe that it's possible. Maybe you have some old photographs. But even then, when those photographs were taken, film was too slow to catch a moving object. Or you had to be really good at a certain balance to even be able to get it in focus on the thing. So a lot of times these are just drawings. People would embellish. And uh, that's what I do for a living. So that's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to leave you with one short little piece, just a few different tricks. It's a part of a discipline known as glass balancing or mouth stick. Because the way this is going to work is that I will balance this knife on the edge, the sharp edge of this dagger while holding the dagger in my teeth. <laughs> Saw some pictures of somebody doing this once, and I figured it was probably legit. And then 18 months later, I sort of had some success, so I kept on going. And now here we are. <laughs> Funny how life works. Let's play a little bit of that juggling music, please. We've got time for two more quick tricks. Okay, yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not too proud to beg. <laughs> Little knife. Me, big knife. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh. How's he do it? Carefully. I've got one more trick. One last little trick. Something to leave you with. This is a trick that is sort of like the creme de la creme of the glass balancing discipline. This is a trick that has quite literally taken me all around the world. Whenever I perform this next stunt, the audience always applauds. They stand up out of their seats. And then they Go to the bar, because I think it's intermission after this. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Huh?
Oh. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Tom. That's my time. If any of you want an autograph, I'd be really surprised. Enjoy the rest of the night.